That is our confession in 2021 that you'll always have our heart, Lord. By the grace of God, we want to be, we don't want to be distracted from that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are worthy to be praised, Lord. Every day, every moment, Lord God, you're worthy to be praised above all things. Love and adored. Amen. Amen. Thank you, praise team, so much. Thank you. Thank you. Worship, worshiping church family here at Living Waters, worshiping family online and friends online and guests online. I'm uh, so glad that you're with us today. Happy New Year coming up in a couple of days. Woohoo! Here we go. And uh, we, we're really wa- learning to walk in a deeper level of faith, aren't we? That we, ha- that God is has a plan for each one of us in 2021. So I hope your January is full of prayer times where you are waiting on God for him to direct you with any specific scriptures or specific directives for 2021. And uh, I'm doing the same uh, going into January and early January, just listening to the Lord as much as I can. We are a church that's abandoned to God and compassionate toward people, and our mission is to step out in love even during a pandemic. And don't let that slow you down, and we'll have a touch point I want to describe to you later here in our local area uh, to be involved in that relates to that. I'm going to dismiss the River Kids in a few moments, but first I want to uh, take a few minutes uh, to recognize that uh, Miss Marty Brown, uh, our children's minister since 1995, I believe is when you start. So that's 25 years ago, and our director of Father's Love Ministry for 23 years retires in just a few days. Woo! Wow! <laughs> and I'm going to ask Marty and Randy just to come down here. We want to say a brief prayer for, over them uh, into, into their retirement and bless them. And, uh, and, you know, what, what a couple uh, that just lives the gospel. Uh, their home uh, is a place of ministry. Their, um, the way they both just serve and give. And, and uh, Randy, thank you for all your incredible support for this lady for 20 to 25 years in full-time ministry. And, uh, and, and, and she lets us know, and we see it, you know, that you really do uh, uh, just empower her uh, for all, everything that she does. And so, Randy, we say thank you. Um, before I uh, pray for them, and why don't y'all just turn around so they can see your, your beautiful faces. Um, Miss Marty, if you've been noticing, has been receiving community awards and we've been wanting to, you know, trying to think of the day to, to, to recognize these things. Uh, one of them is called the Shelby Life Magazine Award. And this is one, again, given to a, a, uh, a servant in the community that serves and gives uh, sacrificially uh, to help others. And, um, and she was one of the recipients of that this year. And that's actually by people submitting names to uh, the editor, Gary Wall. So this is by the community uh, bringing names and there were several others that received their award as well but um uh that w- that's just so special along with the chamber of commerce a citizen of the year from the city of shibbyville and that's the leadership of our city government choosing miss marty uh to honor her again as someone who gives the community so that's both leadership and the people recognize it and uh, and it's not just this year it's 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 25 years plus and and uh, we are uh, just honored. So let's um, just join prayers together and bless this couple. And, uh, and we want them to know the blessing of God in retirement. God, retirement is, is a good thing, right? It's a good thing. It's a blessing from God. And let's, let's let them sense that. Lord Jesus, we just join our prayers as a spiritual family over this couple we love so much. Uh, we're so grateful how 
Uh, Marty has served the younger generations here, but she and Randy, they have impacted all generations in this spiritual family and the community. And that, Lord God, we are, we are indebted. Now, Lord, bless them with rest. Bless them with provision. Bless them with your peace and joy. Let them sense the difference uh, of the weights they carry going into January. May they sense, Lord God, your hand of blessing on them, the providing for them, leading them, Lord God. Father, Lord, we pray, Lord God, that, you're, uh, that, that they sense it, it's just a special time with you and, and your love with you, but that they also sense your strength over them going into 2021. Lord, we bless them as a church family. We love them. And Lord God, we, we can't wait to see how you're going to just build them up and edify them so much in Jesus' name. Everybody said, amen. Love you guys. Mm -mm -mm. All right. That's just, that's just, that's just fun. That's just fun. Um, so we're going to uh, just excited about uh, the Terrells, Gerald and Michelle Terrell to leading the Father's Love Ministry in 2021, sitting back there with the family. So you keep both these couples in prayer as they have this transition in their lives in ministry. Um, next Sunday morning, Ed Berry Jr. is going to be speaking. Uh, he is someone that is has a unique preaching gift. He is uh, called to preach, and he really just puts his whole heart into it. He comes from an unusual uh, perspective and place. He's actually a, a professional sports agent and uh, has lived in Manhattan and all that happened in Manhattan this year. They're transitioning their uh, office locations and things are changing, so he'll be moving. But he's been living in Kentucky now pretty much most of the year, and he's available to preach for us again. And so I want to encourage you, if you think of anyone that likes NFL sports uh, <laughs> or just needs to hear some powerful preaching at the beginning of the year, encourage them to get online next Sunday or bring them here. Uh, this is a great opportunity for us to just receive from uh, how, what God is doing through this young man. Uh, and and he, just, he just loves the Word of God. He's going to be preaching the Word of God next Sunday, I can tell you. Um, so looking forward to that. January 6th and a couple of Wednesdays, Jan Riley is going to be the speaker in the youth service here in the Fellowship Hall. Uh, the title is Crash Course in Love. How about that? Teen edition. And she's going to give her perspective on, on uh, dating through the teen years and kind of how to approach that uh, in, in uh, your teen years. So she's going to be uh, speaking in a couple of Wednesdays. Friday, January 8th, 7 p.m. here in the service, we're having a worship night. Where we're dedicating ourselves. It's prim primarily worship and adoration of him and encourage you to be here for that. Um, all right, well. Uh, I also want to pray over the offering this morning, the tithes and offerings. Just want to say thank you again for your faithful giving uh, online uh, and in person and mailing, mailing in checks. And the Lord is blessing us as you've been consistent and faithful. Uh, we have an in, it was sent out an end of the year giving letter as some people uh, look toward giving extra before December 31st. There's still time to do that. Uh, we have a couple of recommendations, but you can spe specify that into your giving in any ministry that's already established here. Uh, we also uh, are encouraging people to give toward the Carpenter family. Karen Carpenter is retiring as well uh, with their uh, five-year battle uh, against cancer. There's just a lot of extra expenses that we want to bless them at this time. So if you would pray about that in that end-of-the-year giving toward home missions, if you dedicated toward home missions this month. It goes toward uh, the Carpenter family at this time. Lord God, we ask that you bless our giving. Thank you, Lord God, for a giving, consistent body that despite circumstances still walks in faith towards you, Lord God, and gives into your kingdom. And so, Lord, we thank you that our ministries are blessed and our, our communities are blessed. Lord, thank you that Israel, Honduras, uh, Taiwan is blessed because of the giving of our family, church family here. Lord, bless them back in Jesus' name. Amen. In a few moments, I'm going to ask David Rock to come up to um, uh, preach this morning. But I want us to revisit uh, my moment to last Sunday I preached. And uh, uh, I said something and described something that I felt like, as I discussed with family and friends after the service, uh, wasn't quite balanced or clear enough. 
and I was talking about Mary and the different type of ridicule and 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 rejection that she uh, would have very likely have felt uh, when she suddenly becomes pregnant before her uh, covenant with her uh, marriage with her husband Joseph, and I said that, that little boy Jesus growing up in that in that town would have been considered an illegitimate child, and they would have kind of lived with that uh, shame on them. And I want to say that I wanted to make clear, and, and should have made clear, that I really don't like or even agree with the term illegitimate child, even though that is a label, and you know how the devil likes to put labels on people on their past to keep them in bondage, because in the eyes of Christ, in the eyes of God the Father, he has a destiny and a specific plan and purpose for every child born, whether before or after wedlock, it doesn't matter. God has a, a plan. There's no such thing as an illegitimate child in heaven in God's mind. He has a divine purpose for each one. And so I wanted to share that today that I apologize for saying that without the that balancing the whole picture uh, of the message last week. And so let's just pray over that right now. Lord God, I just thank you that you're merciful and graceful to me and help me as a preacher communicator, Lord God, please help me to be clear with your truths in, in your gospel. And I just pray from last week, Lord, you'll just touch each heart, Lord God, and make clear that every person has a divine destiny, is a, as a specifically forethought of God and his looking into the future, how he plans each child and their life and their callings before them. And so, Lord God, we pray that that all, all of us here and all of us that were there this past Sunday, Lord, receive that, that heavenly, truthful understanding that, God, Lord, that all of us are called and designed by you in our specific time and place. And we're grateful for it, oh God. And uh, Lord, we thank you for your love and acceptance that is for all people in Jesus' name. Amen. David Rock, come on up here, and I'm going to let you begin in just a moment. David and Jessica Rock uh, have four fantastic kids, uh, and uh, we are grateful uh, to have them in our uh, church family again. And they... um, uh, De- uh, David's a deacon in the church and serves in that way. We appreciate his leadership and insight there. But you need to know that this family is a praying family. Uh, it doesn't matter if there's any prayer meetings scheduled here at Living Waters. They're having prayer at home. They intercede at home. They have little prayer gatherings at home. Um, as you know, and, and still want to trust God that God is bring a spirit of truth to our nation at this these critical weeks and months. Well, this family went to D.C. a few weeks ago to, to prayer walk in D.C. That's the kind of dedication level I'm talking about, and one that is needed in the body of Christ for people to make sacrifices to pray, trust, and believe for our nation at this time. So I'm uh, grateful that David is part of our preaching team here at Living Waters, and this date worked out for him. So let me pray over him and over us as he begins. Father, uh, just so thankful uh, for David and Jessica and their heart for prayer and intercession and worship, Lord God. This is, this is a, um, a calling upon them, Lord God. And so, Lord, we, we just look forward to joining with them in that. Lord, today we are asking that your Holy Spirit open up our hearts, our ears, that we would receive the specific uh, uh, lesson, the specific scripture, the, the eternal principle, Lord, that will transform us and make a big difference, not just today, this week, but into our whole life. Lord, we thank you that you're anointing David uh, as he speaks and lead, and lead him today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. Merry Christmas. A couple days late, but Merry Christmas. Uh, I decided to get dressed up a little bit today and not wear jeans, but I'll let you in on a secret. The main reason is because I haven't worn dress pants since March, so uh, I was going to test out the COVID-19, and they still fit, so that's a, that's a good thing. It was, it was question mark this morning what was going to happen there, but uh, we were able to pull it off. Well, th- this morning I'm going to continue on in the uh, this series of talking about the, 
dilemmas uh, that we've been going through. And uh, still going to have a, a Christmas message, even though we've already celebrated Christmas. Although there might still be some families in here that are going to open up presents later on today or maybe still uh, later on this week. We know that that can kind of uh, taper off for a while. Um, but I'm going to talk about the dilemma of belief this morning. And I'm uh, going to be looking at uh, the, the innkeeper and the story of the, uh, the innkeeper. And we have a, a video queued up uh, for that. So go ahead and, and watch this as we start. Speaking of miracles, there was a certain couple that showed up late tonight. I can't seem to shake the impression they made on me. The girl was more fatigued than a woman should ever look. All she wanted was just a place to rest, but I had nothing. The husband pleading with such desperation. But, what kind of businessman would take pause with that? What could I do? Bethlehem was packed. <laughs> no fault of my own. And that's where the book would have closed on the matter had it not been for my dear, dear sweet wife. The, the jab in the ribs from her finger telling me I might want to rethink my position on things. I very clearly knew my options. A, I could find them a place to sleep, or B, I could find myself a place to sleep. <laughs> Seriously, my wife, Estelle, had seen something that I had completely missed. The girl, she was pregnant. There was no way I was gonna leave her out in the cold night. But the barn, it was all ahead. They were grateful. There's something different about them. Something. It's a quirky word. A word we simply don't use anymore. But holy. It's really the only word that fits. They say the baby that he's the Messiah. The one who's gonna, who's gonna change everything. <laughs> Could he really be the one that we've been waiting for after all these years? All my life, this belief has uh, paralyzed me, I suppose you could say. But this, this has given me a chance to believe Bethlehem will be waking up soon. People are going to want food in their stomach. They're going to be registering for the census. All these people in their own little worlds. No one knowing that a savior has entered the world. Out of all the places on earth, God chose, God chose, he chose my place to bring hope into the world. I'm certainly not a very worthy man, but I am a grateful one. And still, I've never seen that woman happier in years. As for me, there will always be things to buy and sell, but this, all of this, this has given me a new kind of heart. A heart that believes. Oh, what a holy night. What an interesting topic of the, the innkeeper. I can't remember ever hearing a, a sermon on the innkeeper. And uh, we just celebrated Christmas and probably many homes you just read the story of uh, Jesus' birth and uh, you know mentioned uh, the innkeeper or the uh, the inn uh, in that story 
not much attention is given to the innkeeper. Uh, now the, the video that we just watched is uh, talking about Christ's birth and this obscure perspective of the innkeeper and his wife, Estelle. Don't you love that name? Um, well, we know that as you, as you read the story, which we'll just read in just a second, Estelle's not in there. Estelle's not in the Bible. And the innkeeper actually isn't even in the Bible. Um, and we'll, we'll get to that in just, in just a little bit. But here we find this innkeeper of this, this dilemma of belief. And it's really a representation of uh, the Jewish people or humanity in, in general that have this battle of believing that Jesus is the Messiah. And so, um, you know, as we, as we look at the, the inn, uh, as we'll look at the scripture in just a minute, um, you know, it, there's, uh, there's debate of was it an actual inn or uh, was it, you know, a guest room or, you know, it, there was, what we do know is that there was no place to sleep in the inn. This is what we do know. There was not any room. And so this innkeeper represents those that, that didn't believe in Jesus, the Messiah, and Jew or, or Gentile. And in studying the, um, the, the text for today, I was interested to kind of, because it's, it's so short, uh, you know, as, as a preacher, you're like, okay, well, let's see where else this is mentioned so I can get some, some more ret- material. And as I looked around, I, I realized that it's just this verse. So uh, I was, uh, you know, happy to, to dig in, uh, but, but don't worry, there was, there was plenty there. As I know, maybe you were a little bit excited to hear that there was just one verse. Uh, but we're going to read a few of those uh, this morning. If you want to turn with me to Luke chapter 2, uh, we're going to read Luke chapter 2, verses uh, 4 through 7. We're going to look at some key elements here. Luke chapter 2, verses 4 through 7. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, that the days were complete for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. So we have some, some key elements here in, in this text, um, and I want us to uh, draw attention to each of those. And first is uh, mention of the firstborn. So this means that uh, Mary and Joseph had other children. As we see in uh, Matthew chapter 13, that Mary and Joseph had other children. Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary, and after that, uh, Mary and Joseph had children of their own, and they had some brothers, at least one sister is mentioned. Um, and so uh, there was, uh, Jesus was the firstborn, and there was also siblings. Now, can you imagine what it must have been like to be a sibling to Jesus? Have you ever had someone in your life that you thought that, you know, they're, man, that they always have to be right? Well, Jesus was always right, you know? So that made some interesting uh, childhood dynamics growing up. Uh, with Jesus, always telling the truth, right? Um, I'm sure that would have been interesting uh, for his, his siblings. And as we, um, you know, we don't know much about his siblings up until the point of Jesus' death on the cross. And at, in fact, at the death of his death on the cross, um, there's no mention of his siblings, and we don't know why. Uh, but he does mention uh, Mary and his, one of his disciples, John, uh, John to look after Mary. But his siblings weren't there. After his ascension, we, we do find that his, several of his brothers took a predominant place in the New Testament church. And so, you know, there was, there was probably some interesting dynamics there, but Jesus was the, was the firstborn child to Mary and Joseph. Next thing that the, the verse talks about in uh, verse 7 is swaddling clothes. I remember uh, one time my dad was reading the Christmas story out of Luke on um, Christmas morning uh, or Christmas evening and um, we were all getting ready to, to eat and as he's reading, um, finished the story and someone at the table raised their hand. 
and said, uh, what's swaddling clothes? And, and, you know, it's a term that we don't necessarily use every day, and, and uh, you probably hear this maybe once a year, swaddling clothes. Uh, so it, it's a, it's a valid, valid question, and, and one writer said that swaddling clothes are a custom that is still practiced uh, today in several countries, and is really the, the cloth that was wrapped around uh, the baby. And uh, this might look a little bit of a, a different concept in other parts of the world, but it's something that we still practice um, you know, here in the United States. And I remember that um, when uh, our firstborn, Isaiah, was born, that, that the nurse uh, showed me how to wrap the baby, and it's kind of the swaddling clothes, right? And how you kind of get that blanket out there and get their limbs in and get them all snuggled in there and tucked in. And I, I remember that lesson specifically at 3 o'clock in the morning, the first night that we were uh, at home, because I was like, oh, now how did, with him screaming, how did that swaddling thing go, you know? It was an important lesson. Uh, and so it would have been common to find, you know, a baby in swaddling clothes, maybe not necessarily a blanket like we're used to, to today, but more of clothes. The next thing that it mentions is the manger. Um, and so here we find that the Son of God was, was born uh, in a manger. And, you know, the, uh, Jesus was, was not born uh, in a palace. Uh, he wasn't even born in a hospital. Um, even to go on to the point of saying that he wasn't even born in a sanitary place. He was born in a place that was, that was dirty, and um, the manger, you know, has a couple different possibilities of what it could, could be or where it could be located. It could have been inside. It could have been outside. It could have been wood. It could have been stone, uh, but we do know it was, a, it was a feeding trough. It was a, a place for the animals to, uh, to eat from, and then this is where uh, Jesus was born in a stable, and he was put in a feeding trough or, or a manger. And the manger reminds us of the birth of the Son of God, um, but it shouldn't distract us because he didn't stay in the manger, amen? He is uh, right now with God the Father in heaven. And I think, I, I love the Christmas story and all the manger scenes, but sometimes during Christmas, our, our thoughts could be so focused of that Jesus, picture of Jesus in the manger but we got to remember that he didn't stay there. He went to the cross, and now he is in heaven, and he will come again. Lastly, let's look at the end, and don't worry, I have more notes beyond just this verse. I know you're kind of excited that the end was the last part of the verse here, but I have more. The last thing that we see here is the, is the end, and we think back to the innkeeper and his wife, Estelle, uh, which is a, is a great name. The, the inn wouldn't have had a, a, a neon sign. And in the original Greek language, this word inn is used in two other locations in the New Testament, one of them being also in Luke. And um, this could also be interpreted as guest room. So an inn or guest room. And um, so it, whether it was an actual inn or it was a guest room, uh, you know, an Airbnb or a Hotel Six. It doesn't really matter uh, which way that we would look at it. Um, the, the thing that we do know is that there wasn't any room. There was no room for them in the inn. And, um, and it was in this place of a stable that Jesus was born. And at this time, we celebrate the, the greatest gift ever given, the birth of Jesus. And um, let us be reminded that Jesus is the greatest gift that was given. He died on the cross for us, saving us from sin and separation from him. He defeated death on the cross, and he rose ag again from the grave. Spending a little bit of time on earth with his disciples and then ascended into to heaven, and he is in heaven where he is now and will return to us one day, defeating Satan, sickness, and he will be victorious. And so we have this disbelief in this video uh, from this innkeeper. This, this innkeeper represents um, someone that has uh, disbelief, that struggled with believing in God uh, throughout the years. 
Again, we don't actually find a mention of the innkeeper, um, but we, we do know that someone had to say there's no room in the inn, right? So whoever that was, uh, there, whether it was the innkeeper or not, someone had to say that there was no room in the inn, in the main living quarters, whatever that may, uh, whatever that may be. And, um, you know, so we have this representation of this innkeeper from the video showing um, disbelief or struggling with, with believing. And we, we find that Jesus is, comes to this, this inn and is born. And there's no room in the inn, so he's, he's born in the, st- in the stable. And, and I, I hope Joseph, as, as the soon-to-be father of Jesus, as I, as I know I would, would ask for a significant discount. I'm hoping that he got at least 50% off of the stable uh, and, and maybe he got, was able to negotiate a little bit more. All the uh, fathers in the room would agree with me. Uh, I'm, I'm sure somebody else's mind went there. There had to be a discount involved. The video tags this, this innkeeper of having this unbelief. And, and uh, this, un, this unbelief is something that still plagues the Jewish people. This unbelief of of believing that Jesus is the Messiah, that Jesus is the Savior, is something that still plagues the Jewish people. And uh, there are several Jews that are, are still looking for the Messiah. But the truth is that the Messiah has already come. And he is, and the Messiah came born in a manger, and his name is Jesus. Ezekiel 36, 26 says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And this is, this is what we, we pray for our Jewish brothers and sisters. We pray that the, the heart of stone would be replaced with, with a heart of flesh. We pray for those that do not believe. We pray for those that like in this video of the innkeeper that is struggling with their belief for years maybe, struggling to b- believe that Jesus is the Messiah. We pray that the, the heart of stone, the, the, the hard heart would be replaced with the heart of flesh. In Romans 10.1, Paul says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. And we pray that this morning. We pray for the, the nation of Israel. We pray for our Jewish brothers and sisters that they may be saved, that they may know that Jesus is the Messiah, that he has already come and that he will be coming again, his second coming. We pray that the, the eyes of the heart would be opened to knowing this and that, that, that unbelief uh, would be abolished and that they would, they would believe that Jesus Christ is, is their Savior. Can you agree with me, amen? This might be a dilemma of, of hearts today, whether online or, or, or in the room. Uh, maybe there's, there's been um, uh, unbelief. There, maybe there's been a struggle with, with believing in Jesus. Maybe, maybe believing in Jesus in part, but not, not 100%. Maybe, you know, I kind of view this 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 innkeeper, someone that has struggled for years with believing. Maybe it's been years that you have, throughout your life, that you have struggled with the belief that Jesus is truly the Savior. Maybe you've, you've hung a no vacancy sign over your heart for years. And God would want to remind you this morning that He is the Savior, that He is the Messiah. And that you can accept him. You can put your trust in him. The place that Jesus was born was in a stable. Can you imagine what this was like for the, the innkeeper? You know, there's, there's times when, um, you know, God will uh, reveal something to me or show his love to me. And, and you just kind of feel in that place of like, you know, God, why me? You know, you kind of feel humbled, right? You, you know what I'm talking about? You feel that, that feeling of, God, why would you choose me? God, would, why would you show this to me? Can you imagine the, the innkeeper um, and all the places for Jesus to be born? 
for all the places for the Son of God to come to a physical location, he came to this one place, to this one innkeeper, to this one stable. I'm sure there was thoughts of why, why me? Why, why did you choose me? Why did, 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 did God choose for flesh uh, or for the word to become flesh and dwell among us right here in my inn, right here in my stall, right here in my house, whatever it looked like? God chose uh, this, this innkeeper. And there, there, there must have been that, that feeling of um, just not being worthy and the, you know, the location in, in what the innkeeper had to offer wasn't much. Jesus wasn't born, as we said, in a palace, and he was born in a stable. And so, you know, the innkeeper has a, um, a place that isn't perfect. He has, a, in fact, a place that's dark and dirty, and it smells. And yet, Christ came to that location. Christ came there. And aren't you glad that we can come to Jesus no matter what we look like, no matter what we feel like, no matter what is going through our, our life. Um, we don't have to get cleaned up. We don't have to smell good. We don't have to be perfect. But he can come to us in our, in our brokenness. He comes to us in our hurt. He comes to us in our, in our disappointment, in the smelly places of our lives. And that's where he dwells with us. Emmanuel, God with us. And I'm, I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for God coming to us into the places of, of our hurt and our disappointments. There's a, a Christmas carol that we might have have sung, and don't worry, I'm not going to sing. I know you, people got a little bit on edge there. Oh no, don't worry, I won't do it to you. But uh, Christmas Carol, we might have sing, Joy to the World. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room. Let every heart prepare him room. Just like that innkeeper preparing a room. Even if it was just all that he had, it was a stable. A dingy and dirty place. Prepare him room. As we, uh, as we look at 21, as we look forward uh, to this next coming year, I want to encourage you to prepare him room. Prepare him room. Even if, you know, this last year there was hurt and disappointment, uh, even if there's pain, from this year of 2020, prepare him room in 2021. Make that, make that spot uh, in your heart for Jesus to, to rest in, for him to, to dwell in, even uh, in a greater measure. And despite those, those hurts and those dark places, allow him to pu push those things aside. And the, the good news is that you don't have to clean him up, that he'll do that for you. And so, Lord, we, we invite you, as Stephen prayed earlier, into 21. We invite your, your spirit to dwell with us. We, we open up our hearts even, even more, God, in, 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 the, in the hurt and the disappointment places that we might have in 2020. God, we ask that you would come in and that you would bring healing. We ask that your spirit would rest with us even in a greater measure in this coming year, that you would truly be God with us that you would reside with us in 2021. Next, I would like, like for us to look at is the, the cry of Jesus. The Jewish people were, were looking for a Messiah, a Savior, someone that would, that would lead a rebellion against the Roman Empire, someone that would, would lead in, uh, them into battle, physically into, into battle and to declare war on, on Rome. And so this is maybe part of the, the tension of, of not accepting Jesus as the Messiah because Jesus was born, and in that moment, there was a war that was declared. 
but it wasn't a physical war. It was a spiritual war. And in that moment, we have baby Jesus, as we look at that cute little picture, right, of, of Jesus in that manger, it's really a uh, resounding statement uh, and, and, and an intense statement of Jesus being born, not just being cute, because it's the redeemer of the world that has been born. And in that moment of Jesus' birth, there's a war declared over evil and Satan. And at this moment that, that God took on flesh, the battle got intense in the heavenlies. The Son of God's first cry was a siren declaring war on sin. It was a siren declaring war on Satan and, and sickness and the separation between God and mankind and hu humanity and God. And, and the, this, baby in Jesus, this baby Jesus in a manger isn't just cute. He is our Redeemer. And so we, as we look at that picture, we're, we're thankful uh, for this uh, uh, this, this war that, is, it, that, that he's uh, taking place and that he's, he's starting in the spiritual realm. And if you don't believe me, um, what happened after we was, he was born? We know that there was wise men that were sent, right? A couple of years after he was born. And uh, we see this in Matthew chapter 2. There were, were wise men sent. And who were they sent by? King Herod. King Herod, uh, Roman king, at the birth of Jesus, found out that there was uh, um, a savior that was born, the, the king of the Jews. And so uh, he sent the, uh, the wise men to Bethlehem to, to find out exactly where uh, this, this king was. And he sent them out to spy out with a secret plot to kill uh, baby Jesus. And he was probably a, maybe a year or two old at that time. And um, the wise men were warned in a dream not to return. Joseph also, uh, Jesus' earthly dad, had an angel appear to him and told him to leave Bethlehem. So what do we find next in this story? That this Roman king, Herod, orders all the babies in, in, in Bethlehem to and under to be killed. I might be wrong with that. Was it to and under or to or older? To and under, okay. Because, the, the, because why? Because the, the king of the Jews, the Messiah, was born the savior of the world. It's in this moment of Jesus' birth that the war on darkness is declared. And in this moment of Jesus' birth, the satanic spirit is stirred up in this king. An anti-Semitic, an anti-Christ spirit rose up in King Herod to abolish the Savior of the world. And the demonic plan of Satan was also to abolish the king and to kill as many babies in the process. And as we stand here thousands of years later, this plan of Satan really hasn't changed much, has it? The plan to bring destruction to Israel, the Jewish people, and the killing of innocent babies through abortion. We see these two threads continue to take place in our nation and in our world. There might have been doubt in the innkeeper, but there was not doubt in Herod. And this anti-Semitic spirit can be seen today, and we must pray like never before for our nation to continue to stand with Israel. And we must pray never before for churches in the United States to continue to stand with Israel. And in the, in the Greek, as we talk about this Antichrist spirit, it really just means taking the place of Christ. I would also like to uh, invite the, uh, the worship team to, uh, to come up at this time. I, I still have a, a few more things that I'd like to cover, but I think one of the most profound Christmas verses is, is found in, in 1 John. And if you can go ahead and throw that on the screen for us, David. 1 John 8, in the last part of the verse, says this. For the purpose of the Son of God was manifest, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Isn't that a great verse to remember 
in his birth? For this purpose, why was Jesus born? Why was one of the reasons that Jesus was born? Save us from, from sin, separation, but also to destroy the works of the evil one. To destroy the works of Satan. And so with this first cry of baby Jesus, war is declared. And John tells us that the one purpose that Jesus was birthed was to destroy these works of the devil. And this is, this is pretty straightforward. There's, there's no second guessing in here. Jesus' name is, uh, is the name above every name, every other name. And I'm thankful this morning that, that Jesus didn't just come and was born in a manger and that he didn't just die on the cross for our sins and that he's not staying in heaven forever and that he is coming again. If you could stand with me this morning, I'd like to um, join together in prayer over a couple of things as we pray. The fact that, that Jesus uh, is, is born and one of his purposes is to destroy the works of the evil one. And as we've been talking about unbelief, I want us to pray for the nation of Israel. And I also want us to pray for, for our nation. And so I'm going to lead in prayer if you could um, join me where you're at in agreement. God, we, uh, we thank you uh, today as we take this season and we celebrate the birth of your son, Jesus. We thank you that Jesus was born uh, to destroy the works of the evil one. God, we thank you for uh, that Jesus was, was born to um, destroy any unbelief in our heart. And God, we, we pray for Israel this morning. We pray for the nation of Israel. We pray for the, the, for the Jewish people from Romans 10.1. As Paul prayed, that my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. God, we pray for um, the, the nation of Israel. We pray for unbelief, Lord, for the veil to be torn. God, that their eyes would be open that they would see you as the Messiah, as the Savior, and that you are, you are coming again, and that you've already came. God, we pray, Lord, that you would reveal in this season, in this year, in 2021, God, let there be a great awakening, Lord, of hearts. Lord, for the Jewish people that, that don't know you, let them come to know you during this season. God, that they might be saved. Lord, we, we, we pray, God, we thank you, Lord, for the, the birth of Jesus that destroys the work of the evil one. God, we, we pray, Lord, in this season in our, in our nation, God, that you would continue to destroy the works of the evil one. God, we say, let God arise and his enemies be scattered. We say, let God arise and his enemies be scattered over our nation. We say, God arise, let God arise, and his enemies be scattered. God, you, you came into this world to scatter the enemy, to defeat the enemy. Lord, so we say, arise, God. Arise in our land. Arise in the United States, God. Arise, scatter the enemy. Lord, we, we ask, God, that you would expose every wicked plan, every corrupt plan. God, that you would expose it for what it is, for corruption. Lord, it, corruption, wherever it may be. God, that you would expose it, that it would be revealed. Lord, let the, the corruption, let evil flee. Let it be scattered. Lord, that your name would arise. God, we ask that you would call men to yourself. 
God, we, we ask that the, the remnant of your church, God, would arise. God, we ask that those that, are, that are confess you as, as Lord, Lord, let there be uh, an increase of your spirit, God. Let there be an increase, Lord, as we say, make room in 2021, God. Lord, that you would move in power in your remnant, God. Lord, let there be a, a, a move of your spirit that we're, we're expecting in 21. God, let, there, let the, the, the hearts of men turn to you from the east coast to the west coast, God. Let there be a great moving of your spirit. God, we ask for a revival like we've never seen before. God, turn our nation uh, that is consumed with self, uh, that does not look to, towards you, turn our nation back to you, God. Lord, let there be a rending of our heart, Lord, back to you. God, that you would forgive us of our sin, forgive us of our trespasses, forgive us of, of turning away from you, forgive us of this, the, the shedding of innocent blood in abortions of, in, in millions throughout the years. God, forgive us of our sins and turn our hearts back to you. Lord, Lord, let there be a, a great move of your spirit. Lord, we, we ask that you would move in power in our land. And God, we ask that you would move in power in the nation of Israel. Let God arise. Lord, we, we ask for these things. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. I want to invite Stephen Riley to, to come up as he brings us to a close this morning. We thank you, God, for uh, your word spoken to us today. I like that. The baby cry of Jesus announced to the heavenly host and the demonic host that Jesus was on the ground. He was, uh, you know, he was invading earth in the presence of God being fully man, fully God. I just love that. And yes, Lord, we agree that the works of the devil are defeated by Jesus Christ. And Lord, we can walk with hope and faith in that. Thank you so much, David, for praying for our nation, praying for us, praying for Israel. Thank you, Lord, that you are the victor. You are more, you make us more than a conqueror. And that is, that is your plan and your work and your way.